Okay, so we're having fun with arithmetic sequences, but a really great thing to do with arithmetic sequences sometimes is to add up the first few terms. How do you sum the first few terms in an arithmetic sequence? Well, here's an example. So here's an arithmetic sequence. 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, and so forth. And you can see the pattern each time I'm adding 3, adding 3 constants in arithmetic sequence. Suppose I want to add up the first five terms, the terms that you see right here. How would you do this? Well, actually, there's a really great trick that, that a Gauss, Gauss, Carl Friedrich Gauss came up with when he was like you know, two months old. That's not <laughs> quite true. But he was like, I think like in maybe in fourth grade or something, the, here's the story. The, the, the teacher, I think Gauss's fourth grade teacher, decided that you know, he didn't want to actually prepare a lecture. So he gave the, the homework, not a homework, but the actual assignment in the class to each student to add up the first 100 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 100, figuring that would like kill the whole day. And little, you know, little Gauss, who was like you know, two, two weeks old, crawls up and is embryonic stage and said, hey, uh, I have the answer. And he did. And the teacher was so impressed. And, and let me show you what an amazing child prodigy uh, Gauss was, because here was his idea. He said, let's call the sum s. And so if we write it down, it's going to be 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10 plus 13. And now Gauss's ingenious idea is to write s yet again, but now in reverse order. Since addition is commutative, I could write 13 plus 10 plus 7 plus 4 plus 1. Now, what happens if we add these up? Well, if I have s and add it to s, of course, I have 2s. So that's no shock. But look how shocking the, the sums are. 1 plus 13 is 14, plus 4 plus 10 is 14, plus 7 plus 7 is 14. Isn't this amazing? 10 plus 4 is 14, and 13 plus 1 is 14. It's remarkable. So how many 14s do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5. So 2s equals uh, 14 times 5, or, or 5 times 14. Divide both sides by 2. And I see that s is equal to uh, 5 times 7, which equals 35. So the sum of the first five numbers of this arithmetic uh, sequence is actually 35. And we did it without actually adding them all up, but we used this great trick. The cool thing about this trick is that we can generalize it to actually find the sum of any arithmetic sequence. And if you think about it, let's take a look at this step right here, and we can actually see what the answer is. Because how did we get to this step? Well, the 5 represents how many terms that we're summing. So that's the number of terms we're summing. And what's the 14? Notice the 14 is nothing more than the first term plus the last term. So we add the first term plus the last term, multiply that sum by the number of terms we have, and then we divide by 2. That's the formula. So the formula, now here's the really fancy way of writing it, if you want to sum up the first L terms in an arithmetic progression, arithmetic sequence, it only works for arithmetic sequences, then that sum, which I call SL, meaning the sum of the first L terms, is equal to how many terms you have divided by 2 multiplied by the sum of the first and the last term. And that's it. And you can see how, how young Gauss came up with it here. Let me, let me, let me show you with an example. Because this is a really cool formula that I think you will enjoy for years to come. So check it out. Let's find S10 for this arithmetic sequence. 30, 19, 8, negative 3, negative 14, and so on. Is it really an arithmetic sequence? Well, let's see. The first thing I want to do is, is see if there's a common difference between them. So let's see. If I take 19 and subtract 30, I see negative 11. And is that right? If I take 8, and subtract 19, I see negative 11. And sure enough, take negative 3 and subtract 8, you see negative 11, and so on. So this is an arithmetic uh, sequence, the terms themselves. And now I want to sum them up. And this S10 means I want the sum of the first 10 terms. Now, one way to do it is to literally write down all 10 terms and then add them up. But the other way is to use this great shortcut. You take the first term, the last term, you add them up, and then you multiply that by the number of terms, in this case 10, divided by 2. Now, how do I get the last term? 
Well, now you have to remember that we actually derived a formula that generates any term in an arithmetic sequence. And that formula is actually given by this. A n is nothing more than A1, the first term, plus that common difference multiplied by n minus 1, because you just kind of keep adding and adding and adding and adding that common difference since this thing is an arithmetic sequence. So the first thing I want to do is figure out the first term. That's easy. That's just 30. We know that common difference d we just found to be negative 11, so we know that. And so all I've got to do now is find the last term, which I can do by saying that a 10 is equal to a1, which is the first term 30, plus d, that's the common difference we found, which is negative 11, times n minus 1. Well, I'm looking for an n of 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. And so I see what? I see 30 minus, and then 11 times 9 is 99. And so 30 minus 99 is negative 69. And so now, what does the formula tell us? If I want to find S10, what do I do? I take L, that's the number of terms I'm adding up, which in this case is 10. So 10 divided by 5 times A1, which is the first term, 30, plus the last term, negative 69. And what does this equal? Well, this equals, well, 10 divided, uh, oh, typo here, typo. This is not 5, of course, it's 2. Sorry about that. This is a 2. Right, 2. I was jumping ahead of myself a little bit here. Now, 10 divided by 2 is, in fact, 5, so I got that partially right. And then 30 minus um, 69, of course, is uh, negative 39. And 5 times negative 39 is negative 195. So that means if you add the first 10 terms of this particular um, arithmetic sequence, the sum is uh, negative 195. And you have to actually even write down all the terms. Just get the first term, get the last term, and then use this really cool formula that we derived ourselves. OK, cool. I thought I'd try one last example just because I can. Here we're using that sigma summation notation. And I'm asking us to find the sum from 1 to 4 of negative 3n plus 7, which is an arithmetic progression, because each, uh, each time through, you can see what happens. Each time through, well, you see for yourself what's going on here. You can see that I am increasing each time by the constant amount now of, of negative 3. Now, what do I do here? To use the formula, I got to say to myself, OK, how many terms do I have? Well, I'm going from 1 to 4. So there's four terms that I'm summing up here. So I'm going up using this formula here. I see that this sum is equal to. I've got four terms. I divide by 2. I multiply by the sum of the first term. That's when n equals 1. If n equals 1, I have negative 3 times 1. That's negative 3 plus 7. That's going to be 4 plus the last term, which is when n equals 4. If I put in n equals 4 here, I see negative 3 times 4, which is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 7 is actually negative 5. So 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1, and 4 over 2 is just 2, so this equals negative 2. So the sum should be negative 2. Is that really correct? Let's just check it just for fun to see that that really is OK. I'm just going to write out the terms here. So what are the terms? When n equals 1, we've already seen this is going to be 4. Then the next term, I know it's going to be a difference of, of negative 3 each time. If I let n equals 2, I put in a 2 here. That's going to be uh, negative 6. And 7 is going to be a plus 1, which notice is a difference of, of 3. Now if I subtract 3 again, I'm going to get negative 2. So I subtract off. I add negative 2, subtract off 3 again, it's plus negative 3. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, subtract uh, 3 again, and I get negative 5. I'm always getting my 3s and 5s confused. So there's the first four terms. That's all we have here, so we stop there. And what's the sum? Well, 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. I'm left with negative 2. It checks. So you can see that this formula really works in these applications. And so all we need to do is know the first term, know the last term, and in some sense average them, then multiply through by how many terms we have, and we always can find the sum of any arithmetic sequence. Very cool. Congratulations. Think about this for yourself. I'll see you soon.